G'day folks, Jason from the Outer Farm here. I'm actually on the Outer Farm property this morning. What I'll be doing today is stepping you through step by step how to install a New Zealander A-frame PVC post from Timeless on your property. So we'll get stuck into it. So the first thing we're going to be doing is drilling the vertical hole for the upright post. Timeless recommend putting it 30 inches in the ground. That's already predetermined for you because there's a stick on every post. So it says bury post to there on the label. So that goes to there. So it's 30 inches or 760 millimeters. So we'll drill this hole. So ideally what you need here is a little tin or a little garden shovel to clear this hole out. I forgot to bring one this morning, so I've got to do it the hard way and uh, do it by hand. So I'll clear this hole and we'll go on to the next step. Now that we've got our holes dug to the correct depth, it's time to install our upright post. There's a trick to it. Yesterday I done one up the top here and I didn't hinge them together. So while you're ramming, they're wanting to spread apart from each other. So the easiest thing is to put hinges, two hinges on these, and you can remove them at the end. That way you can use them on your next set of posts you're putting in. So we'll hinge these together. Just make sure when you're putting this second hinge on that it's above the sticker, because remember that's been buried at ground level. If you go lower than that, it's gonna be hard to get out later. You're gonna have to dig a massive hole to access your drill in. So just come above the sticker. You only need to go in 50 mil, 100 mil or four inches and screw that one off. As you can see, I've hinged them together, so what that does is allows you to move it on an angle. If it was just a 90 degree corner you're putting in, you could just bolt the height sections in here together and just drill the holes through the height section here. But because my corners aren't on 90 degrees, I need that flexibility to be able to open it up and angle it to the angle required for the fence so this is what i'm talking about one fence is running that way and the other fence is running directly up there and if you have a look that's not 90 degrees so that gives that flexibility to open and close and achieve what angle you need to require to get your fencing system up so the next step is to fill the hole in with cement or concrete i use post mix or you could use rapid set Timers recommend filling up 50%, so that's buried 30 inches into the ground, so you've got to fill it up to 15 inches from the top from that sticker, or 380 millimetres. So we'll get started and we'll cement this in. When you're playing with cement powder, try not to breathe in. I recommend using a mask. I just like staying downwind of it so it's blowing away from me, or pour it in and then move back from the hole. Just be careful when you're tipping this in that you don't move your post, so I only do a little bit of the time. Obviously, I put the water in first, set the concrete off. If you've got wet ground, it doesn't matter, but it's very dry here, so... Stand back while that dust clears. So once you put your first bit in, just make sure it's still in the right direction and check it for plumb up and down before you add any more in. So the next step is to install this brace. That goes in there. And all this comes with a kit. The bolts, the, there's an inch tubing that goes in here to tie it into the post. Bolt holes are here. So that goes in the ground quite considerably at a 45 degree angle. So I will prepare this trench now. So what you do, you, you put a tape measure down and you come off this post. And this is where the, the brace is gonna go into the ground. So it's either 800 millimeters or two foot six is where it starts. And the end point is roughly 1500 millimeters or five foot. So measure those out. And when you get to the five foot, that'll be at the end of the post. And it works out roughly 600 mil down or two foot down. So what I'll do now is I'll mark that out and we'll bore those holes. I like to bore there, the one at 600 or two foot, and then come here and do one halfway between at a foot. And that makes it easier to trench it out and dig it out later. So 
so there we have it i'll just dig this trench out now crowbar and shovel and when i finish i'll give you a look what it looks like and then i'll install the brace so you can do this another method if you had a manual post hole digger and two of you you can get on either side and try and do it down in that 45 degree angle but because i'm on my own doing it solo it's easy for me just to do two vertical holes and clean it out this way righto so there's the brace installed it's not installed it's just roughly sitting in place so i can give you guys a look like i said it's quite a substantial hole i hate to fall in there you know breaking a leg halfway through the china so what i'll do now guys is i'll fit these brackets on so there's an inch piece that goes in there a stiffener and there's one goes across the bottom there there's a hole at the bottom and it goes across there so i'll install those so that one with the three holes the inch piece that slots in there bolts up to there this one here with the 45 goes under there and that goes in there like that so that stiffens it all together so I'll bolt those in, I'll give you a look. About this hole, I had to go an extra four inches deeper because I'm a bit of a slope here. So those measurements I gave you were ballpark, but if you drill them out as per those measurements, you're gonna be within four inches anyway. So unless you're on a real steep incline or decline. So I've got those braces installed now. So I was talking about this three bolt system. That one inch is all, all pre-drilled. And down the bottom there. So what I'll do now guys, I'll go rinse and repeat. I'll put the other brace on this side. And then we'll come back and we'll concrete those in. So as you can see, I've put the second brace on there. To the right depth where it needs to go. That's sitting perfectly. You want to keep them nice and flush to that joint there. There. Keep them nice and square. So what, how you get that is you adjust it right down on the bottom. So obviously, if there's a gap at the bottom, it means you've got to go deeper in the hole. If there's a gap at the top, it means you've gone too deep in that hole and you've got to ram some dirt back in, and then that'll square up that. Righto, the only thing left to do now is put a bag of cement, quick set, or post set, pre post mix we use over here in Australia, and we'll ram them in. First thing we need to do is put a bit of water in the bottom of the hole first. them in. You really only want a quarter of a bag at a time and then you can poke it down with a stick, mix it in with the water and then go again. Otherwise you're not going to get the amount of water you need through the cement to go on. It's going to have a big dry patch in the middle of your cement at the bottom. Now as they say, come back when the dust settles give it a ram and we give that a ram optimally what you want to be seeing is water come to the surface so that probably needs a little bit more water in there and i'll give him another ram so i've added a bit more Looks a bit better i'll throw the rest in and ram him again and then we'll do the other hole so before i fill this one in there those measurements again so if you come out 1500 drill your hole go down 760 and 800 from the from the post to there is your start where it goes in and i just bore a hole directly in the middle so go down about 360 on that one because it's on a 45 degree angle so it's going to be half the depth of the end hole okay let's fill her in add your water first Now we'll add in the last of this bag. Not the bag though. You only want the cement. Now what we've got to do is backfill it. You can backfill it straight away. I'm going to give it 15 minutes and then I'll backfill it. So I don't like putting any more than say six inches at a time of soil. If you go any more than that, you won't get a good ram back down on the soil. So. Let's get into it. Yeah, 
You know when you've had a good ram, there won't be much soil left. If you haven't rammed it hard, there's going to be piles. So let's find out, eh? You know what? I thought these words would never come out of my mouth being a regenerative farmer. But this is probably the only time you want compaction in your soil. So there we have it, all finished. Not much dirt left at all, actually. If you have a close look, that one there is going to be a low section, so... Happens uh, not very often, but I've rammed more in. More compact now than it was before I pulled it out, so there's going to be hollow spots I need to fill up with soil when this settles down in about six months' time. Let's look how I join these. So I put on the inside my hinges there, the top and the bottom. I remove mine. You can leave them there. They do move. I have seen there's about five different methods of joining these and putting them into the ground. So this is a method I prefer. I've done a few now. So I prefer this way because I can get through run my line through here and put a gripple on there. And I can run my line through here and put a gripple in here. There's no drilling holes through here, through inside, I can access both points for gripple. And by putting the hinge there, I'm not reduced to just above 90 degrees and out. I can go smaller than 90 degrees the way I've hinted. I can close mine right up to 30 degrees, 45 degrees. I've seen methods, nothing wrong with them, but I've seen these come over to here and they come across and they hinge across to here and the hinge in there. So that's here. What that allows you to do then, you've got 90 degrees and above. You can't go below that 90 degrees. To go below 90, then you gotta put a hinge in here where I had mine. But if in that direction, you've got less than 90 and greater than 90. And if you got it here, like I said, the hinge here, hinge in there, and that's over here, and you're here, you've got to drill a hole through there to run your wire through there out to get your gripple. If you go that way, you're going to drill holes this way. There's no holes. You can still access both corners for your gripple all the way up and down. And if they were 90, timeless give a spare bolt in the packet. So if that did come across to here and it was straight across, timeless give you a bolt so you can drill a hole through here and it'll go through one of these holes, whichever one you're not using. Normally it's the second one down. So it'll come through, you drill your hole through here and you can bolt them together so they don't move. Or you can hinge this, like I said, just buy two hinges every time you put a corner in and that won't move. But like I said, I'm not worried about that. That's neat. There's no gap there. And I said, my load's that way and that way. It's and, and straight that way. It's not that way. But as you can see, there's no, definitely no gap of joining that. So there you have it guys, the installation of a timeless New Zealand A-frame corner. I'd say it's probably the best looking corner system in Australia. And I'd even go out in a limb and say, if not the world, these will never come out. These are that far into the ground and cemented. Not a hope of these ever pulling out when you're straining your wire. But you don't want to strain your wire till they're piano tight. Timeless recommendation is just take the sag out. That way, if any trees or branches fall on them, they'll lay over to the ground, the fence won't break, you take the limbs off, they'll stand back up. The post may take a couple of days with the heat. It'll come up instantly, but the last few degrees will stand up with heat. I just seen an article on the Timeless page last week. They actually had a car go through a fence off a highway, straight through the fence, laid the fence over, the car's in the paddock, Within three days, the fence stood back up again. Try and do that with a star picket and see if it doesn't straighten itself up or even a split post or timber post. Right, guys, on that note, have a good morning, have a terrific afternoon and an awesome evening, guys, wherever you're watching this from, and we'll catch you later.